Does this look infected? You mean that spot on your arm? Yeah. No, it's not infected. Are you sure? It's awfully red. That's because you're shining a red light on it. Oh. Does this look infected? Let's start the show. Okay. Greetings, imaginary can of worms. Once again, it is I, your semolina of cinnamon, your vicar of very silly attitudes, and your arched back of Frankenberry, B.L. Alley. And who might you be? I'm Claude Pohl. I'm the Mattress of Realignment. What? Never mind. Welcome to Eleven Views, Milking the Movies. What's the show about, Claude? We drink milk and talk about movies. That's right. And tonight's movie is Rebel Without a Cause, starring the legendary James Dean. Don't forget the milk. Ah, oh, yes. Tonight we're drinking an organic whole milk, fresh from one of our local dairies. Would you like to do the honors? Whoa! Glasses, remember? Why did you do that? Now you ruined it. I brushed my teeth. As if that makes a difference. We can't drink that. Sorry. Well, that's going to do it for tonight's show. But as always, Milk in the Movies is brought to you by... Jinx Jaguar Butt Cream for an ass as smooth as a 12-inch Zeiss refractor lens. Can I pick the milk next week? I suppose, as long as it's not spoiled or spit in. Cool. So how do we end the show, Claude? Everyone in heat has a story from hell that you have Yeti ears. All your hats with dew will glisten. And? Have a redder light. Good night. Well, we are live. Are you ready to uh, do it's this alive? one? It's a, it's it is alive. <laughs> Very well done. It is alive. It uh, this is our seventieth episode. <clears throat> wow. Amazing, right? Pretty amazing. I, I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> 70 episodes long. 70. And we're still here. We are still here. One of the best sequels ever made, this movie. Yes. Uh, I'm very excited to see it. Or talk about it. We saw to it already. It? You haven't seen it? I've seen it. <laughs> you and I have both seen it. So uh, here we are again. Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your Master of Fun and Wonder, your Viceroy of Verisimilitude, and your Sommelier of Cinema. And I am here with my lovely cohort. Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell. I am the Ace, the Arbiter of Cinematic Excellence, and the Enchantress of Entertainment. You're also a new budding filmmaker if you watched, of course, the 500th episode of <clears throat> Robservations. Yeah. You made a movie about what it's like to live with me. I did. I did. Which is soon to be on the Burnett Work channel. Good. So and, people can um, tune in and see your stylings. I mean, I felt a little exposed. Oh, a little come, raw. Come on, man. Come on, man. I didn't expose anything. I just showed you with the dogs and some behind the scenes. Oh, it was revealing. And more scenes with the dogs. Well, enough about, uh, about enough about us. We are here to talk about one of, I think, one of the most seminal science fiction and horror movies ever made. Something that is definitely foundational as far as the history of cinema goes. Yeah. And uh, before we really get into it, I think it's time that we talk about, of course, why we're here, which is to drink wine. Yes. And uh, this, you got this. This is unsung hero Shiraz. Look at this. Unsung hero. Yep. Um... So, did, is this a Trader Joe's special? It is. Oh. Unsung Good hero. old Trader Joe's. Is this going to be a... <clears throat> you know, Shiraz can kind of be like drinking those black velvet posters you used to win at the county fair when you were younger. Is it going to be like that? I have no idea. I don't either. I'm sure it could be good. We will soon find out. But um, before uh, we drink, 
for I just want to point out that we watched the version of Bride of Frankenstein that is available in this Blu-ray Classic Monsters set. Ooh, what and else is in that Classic Monsters set? Uh, lots of things. The Wolfman, the Invisible Man, mm -hmm. Frankenstein 1, Frankenstein 2. Quite the set. The nice. Mummy. Nice set. It's a very nice set. <laughs> like your nice set. <laughs> All right, well, here's to James Whale's 1935 sequel. One of the best sequels ever made. One of the great science fiction horror films ever made. Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein. Now, uh, one of the things I love about this movie is off the bat how it opens. Yeah. It opens with Mary Shelley, Elsa Lanchester. Yes. Mary, Mary Shelley, Percy Shelley, mm -hmm. and Lord Byron. Yes. Like, what a crazy way to open a sequel <laughs> when you actually meet the woman whose book this is based yeah. on. And you get a, a little, uh, they're talking about it, and, and Lord Byron's like, well, you I don't see how a pretty girl like you could have uh, made a movie or written a, sto a story like this. Yeah. And she explains that she's got more to tell. Yes. And then they give us this awesome recap. They do. Of the original Frankenstein. What an audacious, <laughs> fun way to open yeah, totally. this movie. And it's it's uh, Lord Byron is telling you the story of the original Frankenstein. And he's been rolling his R's. And uh, I mean, it's, it's cool. Lord Byron. I mean, <laughs> everyone knows James Whale famously is a gay director. And there is a lot of, I would say, um, gay content in this film. And that's what makes it great, by the way. <laughs> so let's drink to that. Let's drink to Frankenstein, to James Whale. Mmm. So. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. It's good. It is good. So, Elizabeth, this movie begins... Picks up right where the original Frankenstein... Mm -hmm. uh, left off. The windmill is burning. Yep. The people are there. Um, unbeknownst to them, Frankenstein has fallen into the water that's underneath. Yeah, but you don't learn that until later. No, you don't learn until well, not that much later. But but yes. Yeah, so Frankenstein, they think he's burning. they they're think all he's burned it, up, and and they're like, he he better be burnt. <laughs> he better yeah he better be burned up. And uh, uh, so then what happens? Um, so then what happens? The, the, um, the, was it the, the sheriff or whatever sends everyone home? Yeah. He sends everyone home and then, uh, the couple whose child was killed, um, come to make sure that he's dead and they go towards the, where the fire was and, um, the husband falls into the well. And it's, it's brutal. It is. Like, when he falls into the well, I mean, people don't... People, when they die... This movie is brutal. It I is. mean, when people die in this film or bad shit happens, they really die. They do. There is murder and mayhem. <laughs> a lot of murder. I mean, there is... This, this This film does not pull any punches. And I remember when I was a kid, the original Frankenstein, when the, when the, the hand, the disembodied hand, was crawling along. When I was a kid, that was one of the scariest <laughs> things I ever saw. But, like, this movie... This movie was a little bit more wacky. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if the tone of it was not nearly as as I love that it's wacky. It's really wacky. <laughs> I mean the horror is combined with comedy but yes. in a very I mean very sardonic yeah. way. So yes, the So he falls in the well and his wife faints. And then um Well, he falls in the well but then yeah. Frankenstein drowns right. his he's, ass. He's in there and then you see Frankenstein show up from around a corner. And he, like, strangles him and drowns him. And his wife's like, where are you? Where yeah. are you? Oh, let me help you, Han. And she falls in and it's brutal. And he, no, she reaches, like, he... Oh, that's right, she, she hasn't fallen she, yet. She gives him a hand because she thinks it's her husband. <laughs> and he comes up and she freaks out. And he, and he freaks out, so then he throws her he into throws the well. He throws her in the well. And she goes tumbling down the stairs. And she's dead for sure. Oh, yeah, just cracks her head open brutal and then of course uh <laughs> dr frankenstein yeah who has lived uh his housekeeper well they bring they think he's dead they think yes i think, think he's, he's dead. dead and um they put him on a stretcher and yes the housekeeper is all freaking out and she's like one of those know-it-all you know 
Uh, and James and Whale had worked with her before. What, uh, she's again, hilarious. the actors in this film are the best. Yeah, I loved her. They're, they're just, the acting in this movie is so good. <laughs> so they bring him home. He's on a stretcher. They bring him home, and everyone thinks he's dead. And his fiance, Elizabeth, is just heartbroken. And Now, we should say that Colin Clive, who played Frankenstein, uh, Henry Frankenstein, comes back as himself mm-hmm. again, and he's great. He's great. He died. He, he died when he was thirty-seven. Yeah, two years later. Two years later. That's really sad. Yeah. So they take him home. So they take him home, and Elizabeth is just distraught and broken up. And then the maid notices that his hand moves, and she says he's alive. And um, there's a lot of he's alive. There's a lot. Or of, she's alive. Yeah, death and then living. And it's interesting because Millie, the housekeeper, was confronted by the monster. She was. You know, so they know the monster didn't well, die. that's right, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, and so the monster's out wandering the countryside. Yes. Frankenstein's monster's that's out right. wandering the countryside off on, basically he's on a walkabout, like an adventure. If he was an yeah. Australian, uh, he's on like an aboriginal walkabout. Well, yeah, as one I does. Think he's a little disoriented. He's and distraught. He's, you know, he's, he's he's wounded. He's wounded. He's burnt and up. And he's heartbroken. And he's sad and hungry. And he really doesn't understand why people don't don't like him. like him. He he's just a he's a lost soul, really. Poor guy. And so we meet. Uh, Frankenstein comes back to life. He's being nursed back to health. Yeah. And his fiance is helping him. And yes. Then, and then they get paid a visit. <laughs> yes. By by again one of the great <laughs> great performances ever in any horror film, yeah. any movie ever, Dr. Pretorius. Oh my god, this guy is now, just the wackiest, most wonderful, <laughs> wacky. Let me get mad this right. Scientist. Now, Ernest Thessinger, <laughs> who I believe was a, a mentor of Wales. Yeah. Uh, and they've they've said that he's just as flamboyant, or just just as wacky, and wacky. So oh, I'm just put my glasses on. So he's playing. I don't know what his first name is. Doctor Pretorius. Doctor uh, Pretorius. Ernest Thessinger. And it's this guy's performance. I mean, you couldn't find a better face. His face was so amazing. Uh, I mean, the way he speaks. It's too bad. <laughs> I mean, if he was alive when George Lucas was casting the Emperor, I don't know if I don't know if uh, Emperor Palpatine would have been cast. You know, although I, they kind of look alike, maybe uh, maybe he's a descendant. Like. <laughs> and, I, I mean, this guy, his face—he he almost looks like he's got a shrunken apple head face. Yeah. But then the way his mouth and voice. And, <laughs> Perfect. It was so great, and apparently Doctor Pretorius has been doing experiments of his own. Yes, like, he's also a mad scientist. I guess he was he was the teacher of um, of uh, Frankenstein. Fra- and I'm like I know what you I know what you've been up to. Like yeah. I need your help. You need to come help me. And yeah. Frankenstein's like I'm not gonna help uh, you. I don't want to do. I this want anymore. no more part in this. And no. because Frankenstein's out <laughs> walking the countryside and. I, I don't want anything to yeah. do with this, but Dr. Pretorius is very, I mean... Very persistent. Yeah, very persistent. And another cool thing about this movie is, um, uh, uh, well, I want to see what his character's his name is um, in the film. So you have, and I gotta, I gotta get this right, what is his name? <laughs> Which one? So, well, well, Dwight Fry, okay... Dwight Fry, who was in the first Frankenstein, who yeah. was Frankenstein's assistant, right? Uh, Igor, Igor, and and um, f- Dwight Fry comes back and he plays. Oh, it's just Carl. I thought he had some big name. Carl, yeah. Carl is Pretorius's henchman. Oh my god, that guy! And it was great because Whale loved him so much he had to bring him back and give him a totally different role. <laughs> He's so and Carl awesome. is like this sniveling, bad-toothed henchman that will oh, do anything he's for a great buck. With big bushy eyebrows, I mean. And he works wow. for Torius, and he These just wants. His faces are just amazing. He just wants money. He'll do anything. As we find out later in the film, he'll do anything for money. Oh, but he gets his money. He gets his pay. He he does work hard for the money. <laughs> Carl works hard for the money. Yeah. Oosh. So, we see Frankenstein wandering the countryside, and it's kind of. He runs into villagers, he runs into people. Yes, and some of them he just, like, kills, and some of them he, <laughs> he just moves out of the way. And and Frankenstein talks, unlike the first movie. Well, not movie. yet. Not no, yet. but he does speak in the film. 
he do, he's taught by the hermit. Once he finds the hermit who becomes friends with him. Well, he can already speak. He just hasn't been very loquacious. He already knows how to talk. He's a pretty smart dude. Like in the in the novel, he was a smart guy. Right, but not in the movie. Well, no, in the movie he's different. Yeah. So tell me about that. What happens? Okay, so he's wandering around, this, and then this shepherdess, um, he sees a shepherdess, and she is tending her sheep, and um, he goes towards her because he's hungry and lonely. And she freaks out, which is what always happens when they see him, and um, she falls into the water, a stream or whatever it is, and he goes into the water and saves her. Which plays off what happened, because in the first movie, of course, you know, he threw a little girl into the water and, well, he didn't really save her. Yeah. <laughs> Put a new flower in the water. He's confused. Well, I, I, he's, just, he's just a little, <laughs> I think he's a little um, uh, socially awkward. Let's call Frankenstein's monster a little socially <laughs> awkward. That's really, I mean, if anybody spent a little bit more time acclimating him to the regular human yeah, uh, but, population. Yeah, but even so, even when he is acclimated, like when the, when he's with the hermit, um, he still has a hard time discerning well, between not harming people and harming people. Well, he, yeah, but he hasn't been told right and wrong. It's not like he has a moral compass. Yeah. Although he kind of does. He does because when he meets... Um... Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we are, we are, we are. So, so Frankenstein finds a blind hermit in the woods. Yes, yeah, so he... Yeah, he hears music playing. He hears the violin. He's playing the violin, and he goes towards the cottage, and um, he hears this beautiful music, and he's mesmerized. He's looking in the window. And, um, so he ends up going inside or opening the door and the hermit stands up and says, Oh, come in stranger. I don't know you. I, and he's lonely. He's like, come in. And, um, and then he tells him that he's blind and then he goes up to him and he, you know, feels that his hand is wounded and he hears him, you know, grumbling and moaning which is how he communicates. <laughs> but then the but then the hermit And then the is... hermit brings him inside. And then um he gives him some food and um has him sleep there. He drinks then... wine, gives him bread. Well, but yeah, but the at the first part is he comes in and he feeds him and then he puts him he tells him to sleep and then he prays this beautiful prayer thanking God for bringing him someone and someone who's not perfect because he discovers that he can't speak. And so he's so happy. He's like, I'm blind and you can't speak. And, you know, we're a perfect pair. I, and I have to say that there's so much going on in this movie in terms of the layers and what it, yeah. what it has to say about basically the human condition. And yeah. I, I mean, Whale was a very, very smart man. Mm -hmm. and, and what he was doing... In this film, I mean, there, there's so many layers to this movie. I, 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 every time I watch this movie, I, I wish I'd seen this for the first time in 1935. I can't imagine what it was like. I mean, audiences are already seen Frankenstein, and like we saw in a documentary, that was like the jaws of its day. It was a monster hit for Universal. Yeah. But to see this, I mean, this is on a whole different level. Yes. Yeah. So, um, as the days go by, he like teaches him different words: bread, wine. Wine is good. He's, he's yes, it is. Good. And then he freaks out when he light, lights the cigar, um, and he's like, "No, no, no! Fire is good." <laughs> I, I mean, the, the the hermit's clearly smoking out on the the halfling's leaf, <laughs> the leaf of the halflings, uh, and, and and smokes him out too. Yeah. And the and the, um, Frankenstein loves it. Frankenstein, like, Frankenstein's good. monster. Monster, the monster. The monster. And by the way, Boris Karloff is only billed in the movie as Karloff. It oh, says yeah, yeah, in the yeah. opening credits, Karloff. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Love it. Okay, so then one day, the, I mean, they're best friends now, and he's so happy with the progress of of the monster learning to speak. And then one day these... Well, wait, wait, before we get there. Oh. You got to go back to, to Dr. Pretorius. Oh, yes, Dr. Pretorius. Dr. Pretorius and Frankenstein. <laughs> like, you know that Frankenstein is like kind of sort of intrigued or whatever. And Frankenstein, Pretorius right. wants to, 
wants to show Frankenstein and in a, in a scene that when I was a kid I thought this was the coolest thing. It is so cool. So Pretorius takes Frankenstein and shows him what he's been doing. Right. And what has he done? He's made these tiny little people that he put in jars. Like, which is so... <laughs> and apparently this was Whale's idea. Like, way out of left field. I mean... I it, love be, it. Beyond cadavers. Like, what was he doing? Shrinking people? Like, how does he make these he little... He grew them, he said. Yeah, grew them from <laughs> what? Them. You know, but it's such a great... And there's really great effects when he picks one up yes. and moves it over, you know. The king who's in love with the queen. The king, I mean, and they're, it, it's so... <laughs> random out of left field I mean I it's, love that scene so much it's really cool and he it just unveils one at a time and this is the queen and this is the king and he's in love with her but we have to you know keep them apart <laughs> but it really shows how cracked Pretorius is <laughs> he's, he's so like look we should be working together here's what I did you might you might have brought back the dead but I grew human beings yeah. that are a foot and tall like, but I want to make a man like you did yeah yeah or and actually I want to make a woman <laughs> and it's really it's really great because you got basically the, and he even said that he grew a brain so he already has the brain right he has the brain <laughs> wow i mean these are two psychos like psycho mad scientists <laughs> and that's another thing this crazy relationship like pretorius and it was said in the documentary it, it, i mean he couldn't come out and say it because of the time the movie was made in love with dr frankenstein trying to impress him it's like let's work together wink wink nudge nudge oh i didn't take it that way but okay well that's what they said i mean yeah but i think you couldn't because they can't i mean the, the but the 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 uh, you could cut it with a knife it, the, yeah the innuendo and the is so thick but um it's so great and it's so from a science fiction horror standpoint this is really crazy out there stuff yeah. i mean wacky Wonderfully wacky. Wonderfully wacky, but but also <laughs> disturbing. And I wonder, like, yeah. what did audiences make of this? I, yes. I I didn't look into it. I didn't look into what the critical I mean, response. They made a man out of dead bodies. That is, that is really creepy. Really creepy. <laughs> well, that's yeah. They did that first film, you know. I know. So so and and Pretorius is kind of sucking Doctor Frankenstein back in. It's like yes. Yeah, yeah, maybe well, I, I don't know. Kind of, but not really. I mean, he has to bribe him to get him to actually do it. No, he does. But he's still, Frank, and, you know, Frank, once a scientist, always a scientist. But he kind of wants out because, you know, he's getting married to Elizabeth and, you know, he doesn't, the monster is, is killing people and I, I love the fact that the monster is just out in the wild yeah like people are, they're trying to find it but they don't yeah you know. and then frankenstein is making plans to just leave yeah i'm just gonna he bail. created this monster and it's killing people and he's just gonna leave <laughs> he's gonna get married and leave yeah and and <laughs> and then of course pretorius is continuing on with his work they're making plans i mean he's getting yeah. bribed and they're doing all this so there, there is a, uh, uh, there's a scene, a lot of graveyard action in this movie. Yes, a lot. And, and this, uh, by the way, the sets are incredibly sumptuous. They are beautiful yes. sets. Mm -hmm. So Pretorius with uh, uh, Carl, they, they're, they're like down in this crypt. Well, that, that, that's. Well, that comes you're, later. You're that's right. Jumping I'm jumping ahead. ahead. We have to get Frankenstein. Yeah, out. Frankenstein. So what happens? Okay, so, so Frankenstein's with the hermit, chilling out. Yeah, he's having a great time. Smoking out, drinking wine. To talk and drinking wine and smoking and eating bread and. <laughs> mm. And so, um, and so, <clears throat> they go. Uh, yeah, uh, these two hunters show up at the cottage, and they're like. Um, uh, can you tell us how we're kind of lost? Can you tell us yeah, how, to, how to get to the village or whatever? And um, and they come in. He says, "Come in, come in." And uh, they come in, and they know. Then that's when they notice Frankenstein sitting there. Because they're probably hunting Frankenstein. You yeah. know, they never said it. they're hunting Frankenstein. And then they freak out, and Frankenstein freaks out, and uh, they're like this is the monster he's made from dead people and he's killing people and the hermit is just like oh and <laughs> and uh frankenstein freaks out and starts like throwing things around and throwing them around and and then uh, something catches on fire and the cottage 
bursts into flame and everyone gets out and um and then frankenstein is wandering around again. yeah he runs off he's wandering around he wanders in again at these beautiful interior sets the graveyard with the the painted backdrop it's just as gorgeous i mean yeah. so gothic and they're now hunting him like they're they're chasing after him and of course he's so sad he's lost his friend the only person that showed him any kind of you know compassion and made him feel normal um so he is wandering around and ends up he pushes over a statue on a grave and then goes descends into it and it actually leads to a crypt it leads to a hu another great huge set yeah where there are many like and he, and he kind of stumbles into a um coffin and it kind of cracks open and there's this uh dead woman in and again, I mean, showing this in 1935, it, it, uh, the body of a dead woman, and they make her beautiful. Yeah, I mean, she's she's, she's not like this bloat, like she would be, this bloated, desiccated well, maybe corpse. Maybe she just died. I don't maybe, know. Yeah, she could have just died. Maybe there's, But she's literally beautiful. Yes. So, and the, then he sees that she can't see him, and he, he thinks it's his friend. Right, yeah, right, of course. <laughs> and But the macabre, I mean, the imagery in this movie is so... There's a lot of just disturbingness yeah. happening on on every level, and it's so well done, and mm -hmm. it's so. I mean, what's so so interesting is that Frankenstein really just wants to find life, yeah, and he keeps stumbling across death. I mean, or uh, the blind man, like he's finding he's finding not what he's really looking for. What he wants to find is he's trying to find his soul, I think, and he he just doesn't catch a break. This poor guy. Well, he's kind of killing people too, so. Yeah, but again, it's because he doesn't know. <laughs> he's an. He's, Sometimes he's kind of a brute. <laughs> but he was made that way. It's his nature. I mean, it's not like somebody's showing him. Yeah. And the thing is, the thing is, what's interesting is his time spent with the hermit. The hermit did take time. He did. Because the hermit, the hermit, because he couldn't see. Right. He saw he saw Frankenstein's soul. Yeah. I think he saw into Frankenstein's soul and and he was unfettered by the visage of Frankenstein and how horrible this monster is and 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 he was, Frankenstein was actually kind. Mhm. Mm and 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 Frankenstein was feeling kindness for the first time in this mm -hmm. man. So so it, it, in a way there's this great and of course Whale being an outsider and and Whale also feeling probably a lot like Frankenstein being a gay man, you had to be very closeted in those days, yeah. especially coming from Britain, where ixnay on that. So there's so much of 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 James Whale poured into this yeah. film, and I, I just it resonates. You know, you watch it and you can't. It's entrancing to watch. It is. So then, what happens? So he's in the crypt, and the hunters run past um, the 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 tomb that he went into and um and but then you hear on the other side of the crypt you hear people descending in and coming down and it makes you think like oh no the hunters have found him right yeah because it's um, not just the hunters it's a whole posse now it is it's another it's a pitchforks and yeah the whole like all the, the whole village so um they they come into the crypt and it's it's Doctor. Um, it's Doctor Pretorius. Pretorius. I keep wanting to say a different name. Doctor Pretorius. What name do you want to say? Parnassus. Oh, Doctor Parnassus. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Cheers to that. <sighs> the Imaginarium of. Yeah. Um, Pretorius. Doctor Pretorius comes in with two grave digging guys, and um, he's looking for a female body. And they go up to, and, and Frankenstein hears them and kind of hides around the corner. And so they go up to a, um, a coffin and read that it was a 19-year-old girl that died. And he's like, that's perfect. And they open it up and it's just bones. Right. And <laughs> I, I, it's so funny. <laughs> and then he sends the two grave diggers away. And, um, and then he just wants to hang out down there. He not only does he hang out, he makes like a little. He makes like shrine, like a with shrine. And, yeah, and he's just he's got a and candle he's got lit. Candles and he's got some wine and he's just hanging out. Because that's just the kind of guy he yes, is. Yes, he's 
Doctor Pretorius is so is. I kind of like it down here. <laughs> and then Frankenstein reveals himself to Pretorius. Yeah, he comes up to him because he sees that he's drinking, and he's you know, and he thinks, oh, Wine. my friend gave me a drink, so maybe this is a friendly dude. So he goes up to him, and um, and Pretorius isn't scared. No, he's like, hey, he's like, hey bro. Oh. And I know like, who you are. Let's, a, let's get our crunk on. The monster says, uh, drink? And he's like, yes, have a drink. <laughs> drink. Drink. <laughs> now, now, what's what's interesting is, even though he's very simple, I, I remember as a kid thinking it was weird Frankenstein talked. I mean, pardon me, Frankenstein, the monster speaks. Right. And as I've gotten older... I've appreciated Karloff's performance more. I mean, he really does, even though, you know, he says there's a lot of emotion in those words. He was, it was well, good. Well, I think it's important to have the monster talk because it really makes you more sympathetic towards the monster because it's not just a monster. It has, it, it's, it has feelings. It's, it talks. It's a person. And that's, again, back to Shelley's original novel. Yeah. Not Frankenstein's not the philosopher he is in the book, but no. <laughs> but in his own way. But, yeah, but you you have sympathy for him, you know, in a weird way. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So they hang out. They become best buds. Best buds. Yep. Yeah, and um, um, Pretorius takes him home. Yeah, Pretorius puts him to work. Yeah. You know why not? And he explains to him that he's going to make him a mate. A friend. A, f a friend. <laughs> a female friend. And he's like, a wife? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> friend. Yes, that's, wife. that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, unbeknownst to Frankenstein, that Pretorius has his monster, Pretorius goes in and yeah. sucks Frankenstein in. He's like, okay. Yes. They show up at his door and... Um, at this point, Frankenstein has all packed up. He's ready. He's already married. They're going to go on their honeymoon or escape. Just run away. We're out of here. And, um, and, um. They kidnap her. Yeah, Frankenstein comes, and they're still trying to convince Frankenstein. He's like, no, get the monster out of here. I can't even look at him. I won't even discuss this until he leaves. So he leaves the room, and he kind of walks around the house and sees Elizabeth getting ready to leave through the window uh, through the side door and he opens up the door and he goes in there and she freaks out and the maid sees him scoop her up and take her so he kidnaps Elizabeth the monster kidnaps Elizabeth yep takes Frankenstein's bride takes her and Pretorius is like haha now you gotta do what I want you to do yeah Let's yes, go make a bride. Exactly. Let's go make a female monster. <laughs> yep. And then, I mean, the whole, the whole sequence where suddenly Pretorius and Frankenstein, you know, they're working together. They and 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 then they're into it. I mean, Frankenstein's kind of into it. Now he's back in the lab. You know, he's working with life yes. and death, and they're trying to get this heart to beat. It's not working, and Frankenstein's like, no. And then Frankenstein's like, well. We need a heart. We need a fresher heart. We need a fresher heart. And Carl. And then they discuss how there's a clinic where, you know, like, if, we need a heart of a, of a young girl who's just died. Yeah. And then they said, Carl, go to that clinic and get us a Pretorius heart. Pretorius is like, go to that clinic, Carl. Sure. <laughs> go to that clinic. Go to the clinic. I'll give you a thousand yeah, crowns. And then, yeah, Carl's like, oh, are you going to give me a thousand crowns? Sure. And then, yeah, I'll go to the clinic. <laughs> Thousand crowns for you, buddy. And then it's and then it's it's like you know you're on the streets of the town and yeah, and so Carl's out, out there and you see this really pretty girl like walking down the street. Yeah. The wrong street at the wrong yes, time. And but again, in this he gets a fresh heart. He get this dude. I mean, in this 1935 movie, they just straight up sent a guy to, like, snatch a girl off the street, <laughs> murder oh, her, and take her heart. heart. And what's, you know, they do it tastefully. You see Carl, like, go into action and yeah. then cut to, well, this heart's great. 
This is a great. This is this beating is, strong. Yeah, beating but strong. I mean, the the Grand Guignol, the 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 the, the horrific. <laughs> this film does not pull its punches. I mean, now, obviously, it's 1935. <laughs> we're we're you know, it's it's 85 years old. This movie. Mm -hmm. But you're wow. looking at this, and it is straight up the the horror elements again. Like this movie, <laughs> murder, mayhem. Veiled homosexuality. I mean, this movie has it all. I didn't see the homosexuality. But well, the okay. love between it. No, it's veiled. It's veiled. It's, it's yeah. It's veiled. I get that it's veiled, but I still don't see it. The love. No, it's it's Pretorius. Is in love. He's unrequited He's love. He's in love with his work. He's in love with Doctor Frankenstein too. I don't know. Bump chicka bump bow. I didn't see that. Man, Pretorius wants to impress Doctor Frankenstein. I'm telling you. No, he wants to make a creepy girl. I understand. I understand. I'm just saying. Subtext. Subtext. I didn't read that subtext. So so then they have the heart and Dr. Frankenstein's he's all in now. He's like, Wow, we got this great heart. Maybe this will work. Let's yeah. make a and they basically play out the whole bringing Frankenstein to life scene from the first film, they bring it to life again. <laughs> yeah. Awesome set. Let's fly the kites in the lightning yes. storm, which is rolling into the mountain and all hilltop the and the electricity and all the the and levers and the... Oh, it's, I mean, the set design <laughs> the and the things. And the... <laughs> it's so... It's so great. Did you love it? Yeah, it was so awesome. It's it's awesome. They have to hoist her up. Yeah, and she the, goes up, 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 up. I mean, the sets are so great. Because Whale had become so successful in terms... He was able to get the big budget back in 35. Spend, spare no expense. Whatever I want. And the sets, everything is so sumptuous in this movie. Yeah. It's so gorgeous. Yeah, and then Frankenstein shows up. I mean, the monster. And he, after the, um, Carl is up there with the other assistant. Um, I don't remember his name. He had a cool name, though. Uh, they're up there, and they're making sure the kites are working and that she, you know, gets what she needs. And Frankenstein shows up, and he sees his bride, and he grabs Carl <laughs> and throws him over the edge. Throws straight up, throws him <laughs> off the edge. Not happy with Carl. Not happy with Carl. And another, I mean, another brutal death. Yeah, <laughs> it's just that was brutal. He did murder that young girl, though. Well, yeah. So he he had it coming. He got his pay. He got his yeah yeah. And 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 so the lightning storm comes. Yeah. And this the the bride of Frankenstein is is alive and it's great because you get to hear dr frankenstein say she's alive you know almost exactly <laughs> i mean i can only imagine audiences of the day must have been waiting for that yeah. signature lie yeah like he's not quite as crazy as he was like in the original frankenstein he's alive he's alive you know the <laughs> it's more it's a little bit more subdued but it's still no i thought it was pretty it, it's still but he's not like practically like speaking in tongues like he was in the first movie but it's it's pretty great yeah yeah and then um they start removing her bandages and they take the eye and then her eyes open up and they're it's yeah i i, I mean the most iconic some of the most iconic horror imagery ever you know she walks out her hands come up like this yes <laughs> and the eyes so it's so good yep and then they take all the bandages off, and she has got the coolest hairstyle ever. Now, the thing is, now let me ask you this, because I kind of feel this way. She's kind of a hottie. She is. I mean, for somebody who's a, you know, she just had a new heart put in that was ripped out from a girl hours before, she's kind of smoking hot. Like, they she didn't, is. you kind of like look at her and like, I could hang with that. <laughs> like, I could smoke her out. Like, we could have a good night drinking wine and seeing what happened right? i mean even her scars yeah. are tastefully done they are you know so she they she's are. a hottie she's a hottie she looks like but she shrieks she shrieks she, but she, she looks like a, any chick you'd meet at a goth club like you know but how could you have a conversation with her she shrieks well she's newly <laughs> minted she's new to life i mean and what girl let's face it doesn't shriek come on oh come on. Come on, cheers. Do I shriek? No. <laughs> that took you a while. No, you don't shriek. You don't shriek. <laughs> You're not a shrieker. <sighs> so anyway, Frankenstein 
monster comes and he and he's like, oh my god, to meet his bride, and she's a hottie, and he's yeah. all excited. He's like, friend. Uh, and he walks up to her, and she shrieks. She shrieks. She, she rejects him. Out, so they pull her. Pull Frankenstein apart. becomes the world's first incel. Yeah. Oh man. And then rejected. <laughs> rejected. Oh and then my they try god. Try again. Like they seat her down on this bench, and then he comes and sits next to her, and she shrieks again, and they pull him apart, and then Frankenstein freaks out. He's like, "She hates me." <laughs> But it's also, That's I mean, so it, it's so hard. It is heartbreaking. It's and heartbreaking. It, and it's tragic. And you're like, you're like, you know, Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster. The monster cannot catch a break. He can't. And what, what the ultimate cruelty in that even in death, this hot woman, he's rejected by a hot dead woman. Yeah. And, and I mean, yep. the pain of it all. The, the pain, pain of it all, I mean, it's you know. It's so painful that he decides that it's the end for them. Uh, <laughs> and he sends um, he sends Dr. Frankenstein out with Elizabeth, because by now Elizabeth has escaped from the cave she was in and shows up. So he's like, you guys go live. We're going to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm taking you motherfuckers all down. <laughs> you go live. We're going to die. And, um, what about Dr. Pretorius? Yes, he's going to die. Pretorius is going to die. He's and die. and and it's you know, it's it's okay. And, and yes, and 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 if uh, the the electricity Frankenstein's <laughs> actually like on the lever. On the lever, yeah. And he's like I'm going to throw this switch. And they're like if you throw this switch, it's the whole, the whole place, place is going to explode. <laughs> and Frankenstein knows what he's doing. Yeah. Like he's up on that so Dr. Yeah. the front pardon me. Frankenstein's monster. It's 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 yes, always. I, when I was a little kid, I used to correct people. The monster's name is not Frankenstein. <laughs> uh, you're not. You, that was not a careful reading of the movie. It's Doctor Frankenstein's monster. Is that how you talk? I was that kid. I probably. <laughs> I'm sure that's how people thought I sounded. You know. It's it's our it's our little uh, uh, the the voice John Campion had you. Well, let me explain to you, uh, mom. They how... probably out behind your back were like that know it all kid. Uh, I never, I Shut never. Shut up, kid. <laughs> no, I was too charming. I didn't, I didn't really talk like that. Uh, does anyone? I don't know. Um, but <sighs> so so Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster is a I mean stone cold baller has no problem. Yep. I'm taking you motherfuckers down. Yeah. He's getting back for everything that anybody ever did to him, and there's the great miniature castle set that explodes. They blow it up. Yep. It blows up and crumbles, and Frankenstein, his bride, and... Um, Dr. Pretorius. Pretorius just bite the dust. And, and Elizabeth and Dr. Frankenstein survive. Yeah, they go off and have their honeymoon. They go off and have their, apparently. <laughs> and, it, and the movie ends... It ends rather abruptly. It cuts to the Universal yeah. logo, but what's great is it, it, what's what I love too is at the end of the movie they have the the cast list comes up again. Yeah. And it says at the top it says like so good we had to show them twice, <laughs> which I'm like how outstanding is that? All right, Elizabeth, let me ask you, what did you think of the Bride of Frankenstein? I loved this. I loved it. It was wacky and fun and scary ish and um great great horror Tra you love tragic romances that end it badly it was a tragic tragic romance it's a tragic romance because the romance never actually happens <laughs> yeah and a poor beleaguered man i mean basically you know he he is he's a misfit he's a misfit you know whether he's you could call him he's disabled he's mentally challenged call him what you will he, he embodies every human being that doesn't measure up yes. into anyone's standards right he stand and 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 he is is a human being that no one will give love to, and all yeah. he all he wants except the hermit did. Except the, the hermit did because the hermit the hermit judged him not on appearance, but on his heart. Right. And that's what's so amazing is that the hermit knows the blind man knows that Frankenstein's monster the monster has a good heart. Ish. Well, I mean, look. He didn't ask to be brought back from the dead, like you know. I mean, in terms he of, he did not ask to be brought back. No. Nope. But I think I think the and he even says when they're in the crypt and he's talking to Doctor Pretorius. Pretorius. 
um, he, he says, I love death more than life. Right. Or he, I, is that what he says? Like, I, I, yes, I love death. Because he knows he's made from dead people. Right, right. Yeah. But it's all, I mean, the thing about this film is it, it, it is all subtext. There is a lot to be read into this movie. I mean, you can enjoy it for what it is. And especially what, what, what I find very interesting watching this movie again, it, it always strikes me that, you know, for modern audiences, as we get further and further and further away from the past, I think it would be very difficult. Like when I saw this movie as a, as a kid, they, it would play on television. You know, and you would start watching it, and like Frankenstein, I as a kid, I did not have any <clears throat> preconceived notions. I watched The Twilight Zone. I watched things in black and white. Yeah, me too. And and I, as, when you see this through a child's eyes, it is horrific, and you're yes, not you, for sure. You, you, you do feel the horror of it, and you do feel sadness because kids love monsters. They do. We identify with the monsters. <clears throat> and watching this now, all I see is the subtext and the... This movie is very funny. There's a it lot... There's a lot of... And it's very intentional humor. Mm -hmm. Pretorius is... Yeah. I mean, he's one of the great high camp characters. <laughs> yeah. He's one step away from Dr. Frankenfooter from Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> As a matter of fact, somebody should do some animated mashup. Somebody probably already has. Where Frankenfooter... Frankenfooter probably worships Pretorius. As a matter of fact... I am not a Rocky Horror fan, but I would not be surprised if Pretorius is brought up in Rocky Horror. Yeah, maybe. I'm sure Pretorius even might be. But um, uh, yeah. there's, there, there's so much in this film to love. And I just, you know, I wish, like when kids, I always talk about kids, and when you, when you live in a world where Jurassic Park exists, can you be like six or seven and watch this movie? And, and I was freaked out by these movies when I saw them, and I... Yeah, I love them, and you look at them now, and I mean, there's so much going on, and the the acting is just it's so theatrical, and it, it's just delightful to watch this it again. It is delightful. Now, you had never seen this movie before. No, I mean, maybe I did when I was a kid, but I definitely didn't. <clears throat> I don't remember it. Well, it's fun to watch these movies with you like that, to you know, to see because you know, I have to tell you, I didn't see this movie for a long time yeah. after Frankenstein because I'm like I, as a kid I'm like I don't want to see the bride of Frankenstein I want to see Frankenstein like, all that mushy stuff yeah what the bride I, I married <laughs> I don't want to see that but but um, uh, you know I, when I finally saw it one of the things that always amazed me when I was a kid was when you finally get to see these movies that are, are talked about and they always turned out to be great yeah like whenever you talk about cinema history you're like Oh, well, the 100 best AFI films, like, how good can they be? Well, they're all good. <laughs> and when you when you finally get yeah. around to watching them, it's like, why did it take me so long to yeah. watch this movie? Mm -hmm. And I, 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 oh, this movie is so delightful. It is delightful. And watching it again, you know, it just, I mean, it's a film that, it's a film that I've, like War of the Worlds. Yeah. I've revisited since I was five and six, and every time I watch it, we watch War of the Worlds for the show. Yes. And 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 I I still love it. Like I'm still like this film. Uh, again, we are only when this movie was made, we were only seven years into the sound era. Right. That movies only had sound for like seven years. I know that's mind blowing. And and the the way these movies were done, the camera moves. Like there's that great shot in the beginning of this film. When you first see where uh, uh, Dr. Frankenstein lives, this beautiful set, and everybody's coming down the stairs, and there's this really long camera move, yeah. and it's it's great, and you're like, God damn, you know, <laughs> just because this movie was made in 1935 does not mean it's not cinematic. This movie is incredibly cinematic. Yes. Almost every frame of this movie could be, you could do a, a cap, a still frame, and blow it up and put it on the wall mm -hmm. as a as an art gallery opening or showing or whatever it's just yeah. be beautifully 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 done it is so what else about this movie struck you is there anything else that i, I was really impressed with the makeup um mm. and the effects it was pretty impressive for yeah. such an old film and like you said only seven years of talking films 
So, um, yeah, the way they did the, the makeup was pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. You know, we've never done a silent film. Right. For whining about movies. And there are two silent movies I think we should do. One would be Murnau's Sunrise. And the other is, of course, Metropolis. Which we, we should do them. We should... I think you'd really like Metropolis. 1927, Fritz Lang. It's the first great science fiction movie ever made. Oh, cool. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah, it's we should we should watch that. Um, I have both the original version and the Giorgio Moroder mid '80s version where he did music and had people sing. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, maybe we can watch it. We'll have to do that though. But you know, the 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 humor is pretty. I, I mean, contemporary. There's there's a lot going on. Were there things about this movie that surprised you? Um, I really didn't have any expectations, so oh. I mean, I I just found it delightful. Yeah, I, you were. I I love that you get delighted <laughs> by these things. And now, I mean, now that you're making movies, you're I mean, editing. I, I love the wackiness. That that's my thing. I love weird, wacky things. So. That made me very happy. <laughs> well, Especially the little people in the jars. I was like, oh my God, I, well, that I is, freaking love that. That's so <laughs> random and off the wall. You're like, well, where did that... I mean, oh, what are we in, The Thief of Baghdad? Or some magical movie about yeah, no, fairies or something? Yeah, I thought it was great. He grew these little people. And they had little stories like between them. And, and he had to keep them apart. And, and <laughs> I mean, that's like a whole different movie. Like, you could watch it like Dr. Pretorius movie. and the Little People. Yes. Uh, I'm like, uh-oh, oh, there you go, there's, a, right here, maybe that'll be the first, maybe we'll team up and make that movie. Dr. I Pretorius and the Little so People. I down. Dude, I'm You down. know, and, it, and it's all about, the movie is all about the creation of these people and how they went from being <laughs> whoever they were to winding up in glass bottles. Yeah, and like, then what a, happened to them after that? Right, like, what happened there's to them after story. that? story. Like, oh, Dr. Pretorius and the Little People, yeah, they are, like. Yep. We'll get Tim Burton to uh, executive produce it for us. So oh my be, God. Tim Burton presents Rob and Elizabeth's whining about movies, Dr. Pretorius and the Little People. This is making me cry. Who wouldn't want to see that? Would you guys want to see that? Uh, ev- who wouldn't want to see that? Everybody <laughs> wants to see that. Um, well, we should look and see what people are saying. <laughs> Dr. Pretorius, maybe... Someone's done that. That's too good of an idea. Somebody must have done that hey, already. Nobody steal that idea if it's not done. Yeah. Uh, if it were done, we would know. Copyright, about it. copyright, uh, we're, two thousand whatever. Copy- copywriting right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, watch YouTube claim it. No, it's ours. Uh, huh. uh, so Julius Goodwin is here. Julius, hello, Julius. Uh, Julius says one of two. Wanted to congratulate Miss Elizabeth on her final grades. Oh, thank you. But I... <laughs> oh, my God. This is the best. But I object to characterizing the A's as straight. Maybe the A's are non-binary <laughs> and identify as an A or a B. Maybe the A's love fa- failing grades, C's, D's, and F's. Maybe the A's don't feel like A's and they secretly want to change their existence. Bruce Jenner style. Madame, on behalf of the A's, I strenuously object to this blatant attempt to make the A's conform to the image you have of them in your head. I love that. That's so Uh, That is fantastic. (laughs) Sorry, I got all A's. All A's. And the A's can be anything they want. The A's can be anything they want. (laughs) What? Julius, that's some... As long as they add up to 4.0, I don't care. That is some uh, That is some uh, academic humor. Uh, I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. So, Timbula. Tim is here. Timbula the Spider Monkey. This film is firmly in my top 20 of all time. My brother started my love affair with horror at a very early age. And this one was the one we watched a lot. Ernest Thessinger is amazing in this Follow the lead of nature or of God if you like your Bible stories. Yes. So good. Timbula goes on and says, James Whale was an amazing director. People only think of the Frankenstein films or The Invisible Man, but movies like The Old Dark House. The Old Dark House is so good. Waterloo Bridge, Showboat, and The Road Back were awesome as well. 
well worth checking out for those who haven't. Oh, I have. James Whale is one of the great directors of all time. Uh, Ricky Burnett says, what are your opinions on the time traveler's wife? I did not read the book. Oh, I read the book and I've watched the movie. And? I absolutely love the book. The book was so good. The book and was the so good. The movie is also very good, but all, all, like usual, the book is better. The book is better. But yes, I, I totally, totally love that. I should pick that. I should pick that movie for a romantic uh, Friday. I love it. And you haven't seen it. I have not seen The Time Traveler's Wife. You know my, me and my time travel uh, movies. I love... Uh, I, hey, look, I love time travel movies, too. I know. I do. I haven't seen Thanks that, though. Thanks for bringing that up, Ricky. Oh, Ricky. You got the right last name, Ricky. Uh, Timula goes mm -hmm. on to say, If Elizabeth loves tragic romance stories that end badly, I suggest the anime movie I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. A bit heavy-handed oh. in parts, but I have no shame in admitting that I cried like a baby at the oh. end. I have not seen I Eat Your Pancreas. I would assume it's real. It doesn't seem real to me, but oh my God. I want to see that. Perhaps it could be. Um, oh, Ricky B says a, sends in a super chat and says, Have you seen the silent French film The Passion of Joan of Arc? I actually have. I have not. You have not? We should watch that. Um, uh, I do not own it. I want, I'm sure it's out. I think that movie is actually out, but I don't hmm. know. I don't know. So, yeah, no, I haven't seen that. I have not seen it. And then, like, uh, there's a silent film. Not Maybe it's not a silent film. It's an older film that came out this week on Kino. That's kind of a lost film that I didn't order, but I need to, to get it. So, Elizabeth, what else can you tell us about the... the now Friday all I can silent. think about is um, the uh, Dr... Dr. Pretorius and the Pretorius Little People. Pretorius and the Little People. <laughs> or, or maybe not the Little People, because that's like Darby O'Gill and the Little People. We don't... Um, 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 what does he call them? I don't know. Um, they live in glass bottles, so... We'll come up with a... Yeah, we'll come up with a name. But Dr. Pretorius and the Little People. And the Little People. You yeah, know, so... And the miniature humans. No. I don't know. Little monsters. The princess and the pauper or something like that. <laughs> something along those lines. <laughs> something like that. So let me ask you this. So do you still think that a movie that's 85 years old like this, does it still have value? Can it still resonate for modern audiences? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this movie is about, basically about rejection and... Um, you know, how if you're not like a normal, average human being, you get persecuted and you're lonely and and everyone comes after you. Yeah. That's, you know, that's life. That's humanity. I mean, we're not, we're cruel. I, I mean, but is that the lesson to take away? I mean, don't, we might no, be cruel, but. There's another lesson. I mean, these men were playing God. And when you mess around with, you know, playing God, you get burned. Uh, uh, but, okay, now, now, but we, we now live in an age where technology is advanced, biotechnology, computer technology, and, and still, as a metaphor, this works for all of that. Absolutely. I mean, it still, it still works. So, but, but, I mean, can audiences... I wonder if people even have the ability to sit down and watch movies like this and enjoy them. If they've never seen them, if, if like, could you get somebody, could, could Sophie sit down and watch this movie, do you think? I think, yeah. I think she would like this movie, actually. Yeah. She's grown over the past few years. I mean, when she was, even just two, two three years ago, she would not have watched all the things that she's Right, been. she's been watching a lot of she's stuff. She's been watching a lot of stuff. And listening to older music. Oh, that she's always been really like she. I love her playlist. But she's gone in and she's gone back to the fifties. She she she's bounces around to everywhere. Yeah, like, she listens to absolutely everything, mm. and she'll go way back. Yeah, she's been going like way back, uh, you know, to like the beginning of rock, and to you know, she's like listening to absolutely everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is very very cool. That is very cool. Mm -hmm. Well. I mean, it's, it's, uh, 
I just think going back and watching these older films, I mean, we've really jumped around in time. Mm -hmm. I, I, the last the last movie we watched certainly is very different than this movie. Yeah. Well, we're time travelers too, then. Well, that's it's kind of. I mean, this is the closest thing you can come is to watch. <laughs> I mean, I, when I watch films, I always try and put myself in the mindset of what the audiences of the time must have felt like watching this film. And it, you know, it's really interesting to me. Like last night, you and I saw New Mutants. Yes. And with all the modern technology and everything that's happening in New Mutants, there, in a way, there's some similar themes. But this movie, yeah. Bride of Frankenstein, had so much more going on in it than New Mutants did. Yeah. And and the the, the comparing and the contrasting and it, it's amazing to me that that you know that kind of vision. You'd think that vision would just be par for the course now, but it isn't. 85 years later, you can watch a movie like Bride of Frankenstein, and it, it mutants, outcasts, people that are shunned from society and all that, the same kind of things that are going on, were dealt with in such a much, I don't know, more resonant and more, more deep and certainly more uh, intellectual way in, in a movie that's 85 years old. Yeah, I mean, and... and this was kind of the creation of that and and everything kind of derives from from these kinds of stories yeah that were the original you know stories yeah no it's true well listen we're at the end of our journey today mm -hmm. so we we come to it we come to our our rating system our yep. bottoms up rating system. Yes, our bottoms what up. What is our <clears throat> bottoms up rating system? Our rating is from one to four glasses. One to four glasses. Because there are four glasses of wine in a bottle. Four glasses of wine in a bottle. And on a scale of one to four glasses of wine, what would you give the Bride of Frankenstein? I would give this four glasses. Four glasses. Yeah. I too <laughs> hoist my glass and give Four, Four glasses, glasses to the Bride of Frankenstein. Yep. To James Whale's Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> so let me ask you. Um, obviously, we're we're back to three shows a week. Yes. And, Do you know what our next movie is? Uh, I don't yet. I have an idea. Oh. I have an idea then about what Wednesday it. What Wednesday's movie. <laughs> so people have time to watch it. Well, no, I, I well. So I don't know. I, I after this, I, I'm thinking. I'm contemplating a different different kinds of movies to watch. Well, if you have a couple ideas, throw it out there. Let, pe let the people choose. No, no, yeah, no, I, uh. no. Four glasses. Thank you for a delightful evening, says Ricky. Four glasses B. of milk. I was going to ask you. <laughs> do you know what our Friday movie is for our romantic Friday this week? Um. No. No. I have some ideas, like you. I know. I, I mean, I, there's so many. You know, I'm putting on. I'm. I'm. I'm organizing. I'm. I have another shelf that's going in for my physical media. The last shelf, so I finally have all the physical media out. Yes. And available. Yeah. Four shelves. Uh, hopefully, this space will will come together. It's gonna come together, right now Soon. over me. <laughs> it's it's going to happen. When are we starting our new shows? Well, our Star Trek show, which is uh, uh, The Heart of Trek, A Couple's Guide to the Final Frontier, we should start next week. All right. And we're going to start with Where No Man Has Gone Before, the second pilot, which we're going to do. Um, yeah. And then, of course, we're going to do... Well, free the free, Toys. Free the Toys. We're, well, it's, it's, it's fully articulated. Okay. Full, fully articulated. Free the Toys. Hashtag, for, yeah, free the toys. Okay. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> but those are pre-recorded. Right, 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 right. Those are pre-recorded toys, so. Um, uh, John, John, by the way, John's father mm -hmm. is now the official father of the Burnett World. Right. I heard uh, that. He wants us to do Young Frankenstein. I mean, we could. I think Young Frankenstein would be a little too soon. Yeah, to yeah, do yeah. after this, I mean, yeah. a little too soon. Yeah. Because this movie kind of is Young Frankenstein before Young Frankenstein was John Young Frankenstein. Uh, it it really uh, it really is. So oh, let me ask you this. All right, 
So, for f- Wednesday show, what genre would you like to see? Yes, I need a Zed. I know, people talk, we're talking about Zed. You know what? A movie just popped into my mind. What? It's a legal thriller. Ooh. We haven't really done one like this. Yeah. Here's what one of my favorite. 1982, Sidney Lumet, Paul Newman in The Verdict. Yes. That's what we're doing. Awesome. Wednesday's movie is Paul Newman in The Verdict. Yay. Oh my God, do I love that movie. Yeah. Paul Newman in The Verdict. Awesome. So there you go. Um, um, uh, <laughs> uh, Sean M. sends in a super chat and says, You guys should review Columbo episodes. <laughs> but those aren't movies. Although Columbo episodes, there are Columbo TV movies. William you know, Shatner's I in mean, Columbo episodes. There's, there's TV shows that I would love to review. Well, we could do Peter Falk in Wings of Desire. He is in Wings of Desire, basically playing Peter Falk as Columbo. And Wings of Desire is one of my favorite movies of all time. We should do that. But uh, Columbo, that's a TV show. We'd have to interview a TV show. Uh, Jared Snyder uh, suggests Lachu Drom as a very different type of movie you might both like to talk about. I don't know that film, but I would definitely look into that. That could be good. Oh. I've never heard of that. I don't know that movie. What, what, uh, what, where's that movie from? I don't know. Hmm. Should look that up. We should, we will look that up. Uh, Frackoff Felgerkarp says the car. The car. <laughs> I saw the car. Oh. Is that the. James Brolin car from hell. Oh. Literally a car from hell. No, I'll tell you. You want, here's my story about the car, people. So, when Star Wars opened. My dad took me and Gardner Morelli to see Star Wars, and there was a line. I, I'd never seen lines. No one understood how many people went to see it. And this was on Saturday. Star Wars opened on a Wednesday. This was the Saturday that Star Wars opened, and I was so upset. I was crying that I didn't see it. My dad says, I'll take you to another movie. And my dad took me to see a double feature, me and Gardner, The Car and Race with the Devil, which we saw at the Coliseum Theater. And you know what? I didn't know anything about Star Wars other than that I really wanted to see it, but I loved horror movies too, so I felt, hey man, that's awesome. Yeah. So I saw the car and waste with the devil. Um, uh, uh, Michael Preston says, would love you to watch The Last Dragon. Show enough! The Shoga. It's actually Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. I saw that movie opening weekend too. I don't own The Last Dragon. I'd love to watch The Last Dragon. Would love to see you watch The Last Dragon Black Exploitation at its best. And congrats on 500 and wish you 500 more. Well, Michael, cheers to that. The Last Dragon, Vanity is in that movie. Um, I love The Last Dragon. But you know what? If we were going to do Black Exploitation, The Last Dragon kind of comes at the tail end of that. We should. We need to go back to classic, like... We gotta watch a little Fred Williamson, you know, Slaughter or Superfly, or uh, we, we've got to go back Black Caesar, maybe one of the great Cleopatra Jones. I would totally love that. Yeah, we, I mean, to go back and watch. I mean, I don't even know if you can call like it's it's a known genre. Yeah. But someone's gonna say, well, you know, uh, you can't call it black exploitation anymore because that's racist. I don't know okay. if you can even do that, but I. I I don't think it is. I mean, I love those movies when I was growing up. Quentin Tarantino loved those movies too, but there's so many good ones. I mean, look, Dolomite. I know. Maybe we should go back and watch Dolomite. Yeah. I mean, we've seen My Name is Dolomite to, to go back. Or The Human Tornado. I have a dong as big as King Kong. I am the human tornado. <laughs> I love that stuff. Um, oh, BL Alley says... Does Elizabeth like the time travel novels? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yes. For those who's wondering, what B.L. Alley wrote a book called I Relative see. Age, which you can go get on Amazon right now. And as a yeah. longtime founding member of the Imagination Connoisseur community, might I suggest everyone. B.L. Alley, of course, makes the great... I love the fact that he's making fun of us on two different shows now, not just one. <laughs> I mean, he makes fun of me on one, but uh, 
great yes. thanks to BL Alley for the video <laughs> that opens this show. His uh, milking the movies. Yes, milking the movies. Milking the movies. Yeah. Uh, are pretty great. And so here's to BL. Let's cheers to BL Alley. Mm -hmm. And here's to time travel novels. Time travel novels. Relative age. All right, well, I think that uh, we have come to the end of episode 70 of Whining About the Movies. So, uh, Elizabeth, first of all, let's thank our moderating staff. The Richard is here. Robert Pariso is here. Um, I think the two, the, you two are here. I want to thank our moderating staff. Thanks for being here. Uh, I want to thank Mike Bodden. I want to thank Greg Smith. And I want to thank all of our moderators, Mr. Derringer, Haynock, everybody who's not here right now. And if you haven't, go to the Post Geek Singularity Facebook page or the Whining About Movies Facebook page. Hit up the Richard, who's always having watch parties or Zoom parties. By the way, if you are a fan of the Post Geek Singularity, we are having one of our live Zoom parties on Saturday oh, yeah. after the show. Yes, we are. After the show... <laughs> So I'm probably going to do a show from uh, 1 to 3, and then right afterwards we're having a live Zoom party where you can call in, and we're having just a, a, a fun time shooting the shit, drinking some liquor, talking about stuff. Uh, everybody is invited. Will you be here? Do you want to come in? Are you working Saturday? I'm not working this Saturday. Not working this Will you? Will you join us? I will. Can people pepper you with questions? They can. All right, then. Yes, start thinking about your questions. All right, so we will be here on Saturday. So, Elizabeth, why don't you take us out? All right, everyone you meet has a story to tell. Hang on a second. Not to criticize. Let me direct you a little bit here. <laughs> you got to stop, and you can't. You, you have to be like, all right, then give it a little bit of a breath. <laughs> okay. And, and, then, and then say, and then start. Okay. Well, you don't have to do exactly that. Oh I mean, I meant breath. All right, just let me do it okay, my way. Do it, my you're... goodness. How long have I been doing this? I'm just saying. So everyone you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear. And all you have to do is listen. Ooh, that was good. Cool. Oh, give me a kiss, babe. What's up with that? Nice. Nice. All right. All right. Uh, okay, and? Have a better night. Have a better night. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks for the support of the channel. Please subscribe. Hit the, you know, what everybody says, the button, the, the bell. And um, that's great. Thanks very much. We'll see you on Wednesday for another Whining About Movies. Yes. What, did, what movie? Did I don't you know yet. Oh, The Verdict. Yeah, you did. We're doing The Verdict. The verdict. We're doing 1982's The Verdict, directed by Sidney Lumet, starring <laughs> Paul Newman. <laughs> If you guys haven't seen The Verdict, oh my god, don't read about the end. Just watch it. Watch it. Yeah. The Verdict. It's going to be good. It's so good. It's such a good movie. Have a good night. <laughs>